All right, so I start out by stripping the wire and now I don't have a razor blade. Here we go. So I start out by stripping the wire and I strip it back um, quite a bit, uh, enough that you can easily handle the smaller wires that are inside. So um, this is probably about two and a half inches. And a trick that I use when stripping the wire is I bend it. Now, you don't want to kink the wires on the inside, but it's safe to bend it a little bit. And what that does is that if I just start to cut, then the wire will actually peel away before I have cut all the way through, and that way the wires underneath do not get nicked, which is pretty important. Um, if they do get nicked, you're not going to see a problem right away. And here you can see I straighten it, and then I rotate it, and I bend it again. If they do get nicked, you're not going to see a problem right away, uh, necessarily. Uh, but it's a problem. You can see how it just peels right open. Um, but it's a problem that will show itself over time with um, corrosion. So I just take my time and rotate it a couple times, and here I have stripped the outer sheathing. Then generally separate the pairs, and then separate each pair. Starting at the outside and using sort of an unscrewing motion. Undone. And now what you'll have is eight wires all separated from each other. Now I'm not going to go into, well, mainly because I don't remember uh, all the different options for uh, color coding and how each pairs go together in different scenarios, but. Uh, I'm just going to assume right now that we're going to use a brown, blue with white, green, three, orange with white, and sometimes you can change, you know, twist the wires around so that they lay out a little flatter in here so that you're not braiding something together in there, but uh, so let's see, we have blue, brown, blue with white, green, orange, orange with white, actually let's swap these around. Didn't actually pick up, <laughs> didn't do this so well. Uh, let's say blue, brown, orange, green, green with white, orange with white, white with, I'm sorry, orange with, white with orange, white with brown, and white with blue. Again, you can play with them until they seem to lay pretty flat in here. And not paying attention to the color pattern that I'm using, but you can see what I've created. It's sort of a fan of the correct layout. Blue, brown, orange, green, white with green, white with orange, white with brown, white with blue. Then, using my finger and pinching right here, I start to bring the wires together. And you can see that I've got, while holding my finger here so they can't cross over each other, I've got the wires still in the correct order but getting closer to uh, being all next to each other. Now I will use my fingers held tightly together and I'm going to bend and pull through. And then I'll go the other way. I'll bend and pull through. 
Sometimes I'll rock it back and forth, that helps. But you can see that since I'm holding my fingers here, the wires cannot cross over from one to the other. And if I bend it a couple times, you'll see that I'm left with this. I'll straighten it out a little bit for you. I'm left with this. Now, this here is perfectly flat. The wires are still in the correct order. Now I can take cutters. I happen to like these cutters. But you can use any sort of dikes or even end cutters. Um, anything you can get over here. And then at the correct length, I'm eyeballing this, but uh, it's I think it's about 3 eighths of an inch. Um, somewhere close to half, probably half an inch. And I'm just going to cut them all at once. So now I have all my wires neatly together, perfectly flat, and ready to accept my RJ45 plug. Once I slide the plug on, again, I, I don't have one here to show you, I'm, I'm all out currently, but uh, once I have my plug, this will slide in, and if you just use a slight wiggling motion, and you look into the plug, making sure that you have the correct orientation this way to the plug. You slide it in. Once the plug's on, it's as easy as grabbing your crimpers and crimping it. And of course, my crimpers aren't here, but <laughs> but it's as easy as that. Slide the plug on and crimp it. And then <clears throat> one other thing I thought I should show you while I've got you here is. Got a, I mean, I just had a little toolbox. Where did it go? Ah. Right in front of me. So I have a little toolbox here. <clears throat> I personally like to use the yellow heat shrink. Um, I kind of looked at it as a trademark thing for, for me when I was working on yachts because I, I like to be able to step on a boat and know immediately what was my work and what was not. Um, it, I also think that the yellow tends to stand out. Um, it jumps out at you and says, hey, look at me, I'm a label. But <clears throat> with the heat shrink, if you use your fingers or sometimes you can bend it over something to help flatten it out. You know, if you have an edge, I don't have an edge of a table really here, but if you have an edge you can bend it over the edge and that helps to hold it kind of flat. But uh, nonetheless, just go ahead and write on it. And on this one, I'll just write, uh, oh, let's just write radar. And here I am, out of practice, it does not look very neat, but that's okay, it's going to be a perfect example to show you how you can take that routing that looks pretty crude, like an eight-year-old did it, <coughs> slide it onto our wire, I'm just going to use the other end, so I'm going to destroy that. We'll slide it on the, the wire, and I think it's important to keep it close to your termination. That way it's not hard to find the label. You know, if it's three feet down, it, it'll get lost. So I, I like to keep it pretty close. And then, of course, when you're using heat shrink, you don't want to use a uh, lighter or a match. Uh, you'll just end up burning the heat shrink. Um, if you're talented with some experience, you can use... Uh, a very small propane torch with uh, some success. Uh, that's what I used to use. But if you have it, a heat gun like this, very useful. 